we are making nested mixing bowls today and this is the first time I have uh, ever done this and so I was experimenting with weights and I'm going to change the portions a little bit but I'll show you what I've done first go around so this is was going to be the small one at two pounds this is the medium one at three pounds and this is the large one at four pounds and I, what I'm going to do is switch this to one and three quarters leave this one at three and make this one go up to four and a half and I think that'll give me just the right amount of differential between the three of them so this is a good start and I will start with making the smaller one and show you how I throw these it is throwing Thursday and this week I am working on nested mixing bowls. This is going to be our smallest nested mixing bowl and I tried it at two pounds and it was a little large so I'm going to switch it down to just one and three quarters. So let me show you how I throw this one. And so we're going to do three different sizes of these nested mixing bowls. And this will be the smallest one, and it's going to be one and three quarters of a pound of clay. The middle size one is going to be two pounds of clay, and then the large one is going to be four and a half pounds of clay. And so what I'm doing to get the sizes right is just changing the weight in them using the exact same bat and slowly making the base a little bit bigger and with the extra weight then the piece will be a little bit taller and a little bit wider because there's not much variation that can go in with them if you're just altering the amount of clay that you are starting with so let's get this moving up and I'm working still learning how to work with these plaster bats that are new for me and I've been having trouble with getting the bottoms just the right thickness so I'm still having to use my needle tool every time and test the thickness on the bottom because I can't just automatically get it and that one actually ended up being just right so maybe I'm starting to kinetically learn what the thickness be on these. Now the first ones I threw, I threw in white clay and this I've switched over to my favorite clay body which is my brownstone. Uh, but sometimes we need to use white clay because of the glazes that we use and our red glaze prefers the white clay body where our other glazes that we do prefers the brown clay. So that's why you, you will see other ones in a moment in the other color of clay. So here we go. I'm just going to stretch it up. And usually I put a lip, layered lip, on all my bowls. But since this is a mixing bowl and they're going to nest inside of each other, I'm not going to do a flare. I'm going to go straight up like this. And I want a nice deep mixing bowl. Oh, there's Ivy. She wants in. I didn't realize she went out. Let's get her in. Come on, Ivy. There you go. One advantage of having your wheel by the door is letting the dogs in and out when they want in and out. All right. So I'm feeling pretty good about that shape. It's got a really nice curve in it. That one actually came very easily to me. I'm going to put my swirl in the bottom that I love to put in. And then use my mud sponge tool just to smooth things out a little bit. And then I like to fold it over the rim just to get a nice smooth rim on it. Okay, that is looking pretty good. I think that's a nice shaped mixing bowl for our small one and now I'm just going to do a little lip on this because it needs just a little lip on it 
If it's a mixing bowl, that means you're going to be pouring out of it. And so let's just get a little bit of a pouring lip. And I'm pinching it a little bit here to make it clay a little thinner and to pour up and then stretching back and forth a little bit. And not quite there yet. I want it to be symmetrical. And I'm going to use my sponge. Boop, boop, boop. And then I'm going to spin this back around again just to make sure I didn't distort my bowl at all when I stuck the lip on. And I think that's pretty good. So let me lift this up off. So this bowl will not get trimmed on the bottom. This is what it's going to be. And there's its shape right there. And that will be the small one. And this is going to shrink about 12%. So that is how I throw these. And then for the next one, I'll just do the base a little wider. And for the last one, I'll go close to the end of the spat. And that way they'll nest in beautifully and will be a beautiful, nice set. So I um, thought actually after I threw that small one, it might be fun to watch me throw all three of them and just see how I size one with the other. Um, so this is the next size up our medium mixing bowl. And this one's three pounds. So the first was one and three quarter. This is the second one is three pounds. So here I go, I'm gonna throw this one. I'm throwing it on the same size round back. And I'm gonna utilize that size of the bat to know, just go a little bit larger or a little further out on the base as compared to the first one, but leave space for the biggest one to go even a little wider. So I use my bat sizes all the time to establish the width of my base. And that helps me be consistent with all my shapes from one to the next because I weigh everything out so I know how much weight each piece starts at. And based on my size bat, I know how far I'm gonna throw out on my bat. So this one is slightly wider, starting the base is, than the smaller one. But I'm leaving a little bit of space to still go wider for the last one. All right, so I'm still not happy with that, I got that centered, so let me work on that for a second. Okay, there we go. Alrighty, so I'm gonna put a hole in the middle and pull it out. So a lot of people uh, will take their pots after their leather card and trim the bottoms. Some pieces I do that way and some pieces I do not do that way. These I am not gonna do that way, so I have to get the thickness on the bottom right now and um, I actually think it takes more expertise to do it this way because you gotta get it right from bottom to top thickness without depending on trimming to change the shape. And I think it's made me a better potter to learn what clay will and will not do because I don't leave my bottoms heavy um, and plan on taking the weight out by trimming. So the other thing is, is I can throw this pot over again in the time that it would take me to trim this pot. And I think as most of you know who watch me long enough, I'm a production potter and we have to make pieces in a certain amount of speed. All right, so let's go ahead and start getting the weight out of the bottom of this pot and start pulling it up pulling it up and widening it out. So I'm working on the base every time after I pull because I want a nice curve in the bottom. And then I go back to the bottom and rounding out that curve the way I want it. And then thinning out the bottom and getting another pull here. There we go. 
I always like to leave extra weight at the rim because this piece is going to stretch out and this is going to get thinner as I stretch the bowl out. And so you want to leave the rim not real heavy, but heavier than what you're working at the base. And that is just a matter of practice to figure out how to do that. So I'm working on that curve at the bottom. I like a nice gentle curve. And let's get this bowl going again. And then I start slowing down my wheel as I start refining the shape. Working on that bottom and working on the inside, working on the outside, working on the inside, working on the outside. So the first round of ones that I threw, I had my son look at them and he said, Mom, they're not they're too tall and not wide enough. So this round, I'm going to try to make this set a little wider and not quite as tall. Because he felt like that was more of the shape of the mixing bowl. And once I took a closer look at it, I would have to agree. I figure they will nest nicely if I get my weights right between one and the other and I get my bases right because where else do they have to go but up. So this one's going to end up being a little taller and a little wider because my base is set and I have more clay so got to get bigger unless I start making things lot thicker on the walls or leave the bottom too heavy. Okay, there goes the swirl. Put it in there. And we're going to clean up with the sponge and just make it a little smoother. And I finish with the rim. Okay, so that is our second one. Let's put the lip on it. And it's just gonna be a gentle lip. Squeeze, squeeze. Pinch it, because I want it to come up a little bit for the pouring lip. I'm doing these a little different than I usually do on my other lips because they have to nest inside each other. So you want them to come up more than out. But then they need to smooth it evenly. So it takes a little extra time. And then I will probably come back in once this is stiffer and touch it up again. see if I distorted that bowl at all because I don't want to distort the bowl from the one the lip. No, nope, that's pretty good. All right, so that is the second one. Let's pull that one out. So there is the second one and we are going to throw it just a little wider in the base and we'll see what we get. I'm almost feeling like I need to go to a larger bat. So, yeah, I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna switch my bats real quick and go to a bat that has a bigger base and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so we are ready to throw the bigger of the three nested mixing bowls. And this is the four pounder. I have switched, I had to switch my wheel head to support this other larger size bat because I need to get the base wider and the other system was not going to go wide enough. So here we go. Let's get this one centered. This is like I said, four pounds. 
And then I'm going to show you the difference between the first go around of these and the modifications I made after seeing what the original weights did in assessing the shape. So we will, you can assess them with me and tell me which set you like better. Okay, so just from experience, I know that this base, I can tell by the feel of it, is bigger than the last one. And this is a pound and a half more clay than the bowl I just threw. When I'm making bowls, I really like to get my clay really well centered, especially the bigger I go, the more important it is for me to get this clay centered just the way I like it. So I'm feeling good about that. And let's open this up. And then we will check about the thickness of our base. And I like my bases to be about a quarter of an inch thick on the bottom, so that's when I'm looking for the bigger the piece, if I get really big on a piece, I'll go heavier than a quarter of an inch. I'll go closer to a half inch. So let's see what we got. Yeah, I'm gonna take just a little bit more weight out of that and then I think we'll have it. So because these are plaster bats, the moisture will be absorbed out of the bottom of the pot and I should not have to run a cutting wire under it. It should just have a nice smooth bottom and it will pop off once the moisture is pulled out of the bottom. So I'm not taking into any account of how much clay I'm going to lose because I ran a cutting wire under it. So that's another thing to think about. And that was one of the reasons I switched to these plaster mats because I really like the idea of not having to run a cutting wire under anything, especially when so many of the pieces, you can go ahead and turn the water on, Patricia. <laughs> especially since so many of the pieces I don't trim the bottoms of anyway. So um, the plaster bat system was just a really good idea. So if I was throwing something that was not going to be open but that was going to be closed, I wouldn't be pulling this wall out at an angle. I would be continually keeping this wall in because to try to get this to collar back in is uh, difficult. So I'm already starting as I'm pulling these walls up and thinning them out to starting that shape a little bit. And so I work on the base and keep my base nice and even on the outside and then add a little water. Make sure I got a really nice curve that I like. And here we go for another pull. And this is not a shape I usually do. I don't usually do a really wide bowl like this uh, that's shaped real rounded. I usually do either a flat bowl or um, when I do my deep bowls, it usually has more lift rather than roundness to it. So it's going to take me a little while and a little practice to get this to be old hat and come naturally. Here, I'm not loving it right here where it transitions and stuff. 
sometimes a rib will help take care of that nice cur gentle curve that I always shoot for. There we go. That's better. All right, let's see if we can get this to look more like a mixing bowl. I want to get the weight out of the bottom. Wider, so it feels like a mixing bowl, and still get some height out of it. And you'll see how adding an extra pound and a half from one shape to the next, going from two pounds, what did I say? No, three pounds to four and a half, doesn't make the bowl a whole heck of a lot larger. You would think it does, but you use a lot of your clay on your base, and it just doesn't, like if you use twice as much clay, it doesn't get twice as much larger. It just does not. And so that's why sometimes I just have to try some different weights until I find one that is the right weight for what I'm attempting to do. I'm going to put our swirl on the bottom. There we go. I'm going to get rid of all the rough edges real quick. I use them in the sponge to just smooth it out. Both inside and out. Compress the top. Shape is pretty good. Okay, so let's get our pouring whip on here. Some pinching, get it to go up, and then smoothing it back and forth. And this one needs to be a little wider than the last one. And then I want it to look even. And like I said, I will come back and once the clay is a little stiffer, clean that up. All right, so now we have three bowls. I'm hoping this one is taller than the last. And I'm gonna move them side by side and we'll take a look between the first round of these and the second round and see if I went taller and wider on each one. All right, so let me move the camera around this way and we'll take a look and assess what we have. All right, so this is the second go round of the biggest bowl. And this is the first go around of the biggest bowl. And you can see where I added extra clay. I added half a pound extra clay and I went a lot wider on this one than this one. So this one was taller, but that one's wider. And I think that does look more like a mixing bowl. So this is the difference between my two mediums. This was the same amount of clay, but went a little wider on the brown one than I did on the white one. So it is a little shorter too. And then this is the difference between, this I took a quarter of a pound out of. So 
This is a quarter pound lighter than this one. And I know they're hard to see on the camera. And so this one is a little taller than the brown one. So this will be the set. I do think they will nest well. The one is slightly taller than the next. If you can see that. So uh, I would say not a bad go for first time around. And I will keep perfecting that shape. And I'm squatting down so I can see you. And that is pretty much it for today. Let me know what you think about our nested mixing bowls. And we will catch you next time. Thank you. Bye.